These are wave speed reducer, also known as a wave drives with intermediate rolling elements. It is somewhat similar to a cycloidal drive. However, the gear profile is not a true cycloidal. I made different versions of this drive, including 3D printed CNC and laser cut designs. In this video, I will show the torque and backlash performance of each. You can see a cool animation of how the drive works on any of these videos. But basically, we have an eccentric cam that drives rolling elements, which can be balls or pins. The rolling elements follow a wave profile. The output of the drive is the separator or cage that contains the rolling elements. There's not much information online about this type of reducer. There's this video from the channel Missing Machine, and I also found a lot of Russian videos about it. So perhaps this means the reducer was invented in Russia. In any case, to make the design process easier, I made this web app on my website. Here, you can play with the different parameters of the reducer and then download the wave profile as a DXF file. A lot of the components for testing were provided by JLC PCB. I ordered this wave disc in SLA transparent resin, just so I could show the motion of the rolling elements as shown before. These are the CNC machined wave discs. They came out great. I ordered them in aluminum 7075 with bead blast and surface finish, and at the lowest tolerance they offer. The total price for one was about $29. Then I also got the discs in SLS nylon. Finally, I ordered the separator in 3D printed titanium, which also came out perfect. This is for a more compact design that I will show later. The separator is probably the weakest component of the drive, as all of the output torque goes through this part. In none of my tests, the PLA separator broke. However, I'm sure for very high torque applications, PLA won't be enough and a metal separator will be needed. I ordered the laser cut plates from Sin Cut Send. They were about half the price of the CNC ones at $16. However, I don't have high hopes for these as the tolerance is much looser and the surface finish not great. Let's go over the different versions I made. I will show torque and backlash measurements for each. I will be using a NEMA 17 stepper motor for my tests. I measured it to have a torque of 0.24 newton meters. I will be using this value in order to calculate the reducer efficiency. This is a 20 to one reducer with five millimeter rolling elements. The elements can be either balls or pins. Let's look at the 3D model. We have a thrust bearing, mainly to just set the correct height of the eccentric cam. The first ball bearing is mounted on the cam, which makes contact with the rolling elements. This allows us to make metal on metal contact for higher durability. The second ball bearing is located at the output to handle radial and axial loads. Let's start with the PLA version, single phase with balls. Looking at the continuous torque readings, I see a max value of about 4.5 Newton meters. This would mean an efficiency of almost 94%. If I change to peak mode, we see a higher torque, but I think I will just consider the continuous readings to estimate efficiency. Now for backlash, the results are not great. The distance to the digital indicator is 135 millimeter. This is a backlash of 0.58 degrees. Next, we have essentially the same design, but with pins instead of balls. The result seems slightly worse, which I think is expected as pins have a larger contact area, which will increase friction. The backlash, however, it's much better. Only 0.012 degrees or 0.76 arc minutes. It really feels very tight. This is the laser cut version. We can see the torque is much lower. I think this is probably because of the loose tolerances on the laser wave disc. In this case, it might be too tight, which causes a lot of friction. The backlash, however, is pretty good at 1.57 arc minutes.
This is the CNC aluminum version with balls. I did see torque readings over 4.8 Newton meters. However, I'll just call it 4.6 Newton meters. So an efficiency of 95%. The measured backlash was of 8.6 arc minutes, worse than expected if we compare it to the laser cut version. However, still reasonably good. Next, we have the same CNC aluminum version, but with pins. The continuous torque is about 4.2 Newton meters. The backlash is surprisingly worse than with the balls, at almost 15 arc minutes. Next, let's look at the next configuration. This is also a 20 to 1 reducer, but with two phases, which means two wave discs offset 180 degrees. And this is the corresponding separator. The idea with this design is to remove vibrations and have a smoother output. This also helps to reduce backlash, as we will see later. Here's a comparison of the one-phase and two-phase design. Both have the same diameter, but the two-phase is slightly taller. I designed the two-phase 3D printed version such that the disc's relative position is adjustable. The idea with this is that you can adjust the second disc rotation to tighten it against the rolling element. This will remove any slack and reduce backlash. It's a small amount, but it makes a difference. This is the version with the SLS nylon wave discs. We can see a really good efficiency of over 90%. The backlash is a bit high at 17 arc minutes. Next, Let's move on to the two-phase design. This one has the CNC aluminum wave plates. Based on the video footage, I would call this a max continuous torque of four Newton meters. The backlash is really good. About 0.018 degrees or 1.1 arc minutes. Then, this is a similar reducer, printed in PLA, but for this design, the separator is fixed in place, which means that the output of the drive is the wave disc. With this configuration, we can achieve a slightly higher reduction ratio. In this case, 21 to 1. Let's look at the torque efficiency. I would call this at 4.5 Newton meters. Really good backlash at 1.3 arc minutes. Finally, this is a smaller reductor with an 8 to 1 ratio. I also made a two-stage design, each one having a reduction of 8, for a total reduction of 64. However, this did not turn out well as there is too much friction in the assembly and there is basically no torque output. I'll need to spend more time on this one before I can test it. Now, let's look at the smaller reductor with a ratio of 8 to 1. The torque is about 1.35 Newton meters. The backlash is the largest we have seen at 70 arc minutes. This is a summary of the torque tests. I would say that all designs seem to be pretty capable, except for the laser cut configuration. In general, I prefer the two-phase designs, as the output rotation is much smoother. The one-phase design tends to be a bit jerky, the ball's version more so than the pin's version. However, I would say the CNC pin's version is very comparable to the two-phase designs. And this is the backlash summary. I would say that for most applications, any of the highlighted configurations would be a good fit. I also ran an endurance test. I attached a 2.25 kilogram weight at a distance of 150 millimeters. 
resulting in a torque of 3.3 newton meters. And just let it run. This is what the wave disc looks like after one hour. Very little sign of wear. I only tested it with PLA, as this will be the worst case scenario. I expect the SLS nylon and aluminum discs to show even less wear. And this is the disc after little over three hours of continuous operation. You can clearly see more wear. Perhaps in another video, I will test the aluminum and nylon versions. The PLA separator looks intact. This is the max torque tests. Again, with the PLA version, as this will be the worst case scenario. I clamped the eccentric cam and applied torque until something broke. Actually, after inspection, I didn't notice any damage to any of the parts of the drive. This is the wave disc. As you can see, there's no clear deformation. And the separator also looks intact. So I suspect that the wave disc just deformed enough for the pins to skip to the next tooth. The last thing I want to test is the repeatability. I will drive the motor back and forth 90 degrees and see how much the position has changed. This calculates to a value of one arc minute approximately. The indicator is 135 millimeters from the center of the drive. This is how one of the drives goes together. This is the CNC single phase version. I think from what I tested, that this type of reducer is very promising. I would say there are four main advantages over other designs. High torque efficiency, in some cases comparable to planetary gears. Low backlash, low par count, as opposed to cycloidal drives. And also, we can achieve metal on metal contact relatively easy. For this reason, I'm considering offering the CNC version of this drive on my website. If there's enough interest, we can get a good prize for the machined wave discs. For example, for quantity 250, we can get it under $10. So if you're interested, feel free to let me know by filling out this form on my website. I'll also put a link in the description. However, if you just wanna make your own wave drive, the files will be available on my website as well. I plan to make a couple of robots with this drive. So let me know if you wanna see more of that. For example, this is a Scara robot with wave drives in both joints.